All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We've got another quick one this week due to goings on outside of RC, but it is an important one though. We need to build the Tamiya driver. There's not too much to put in these driver figures together, but if you want him to fit, you need to do things in the right order. Tamiya do a good job explaining about positioning the limbs, but there's nothing like seeing it in video for the penny to drop. So we need to clip out the parts from the parts tree with some side cutters, trying to cut them nice and flush to the part. We will start with the body where we have the front and the back. The parts are a very nice fit, as of course you would expect from Tamiya. To stick them together, we're going to use some Pasty Weld. It's very thin like water, so with a few drops it'll wick its way around, melting the plastic at the seam, making for a solid part. You can get proper tools, but a pair of tweezers works just as well. We hold them closed and we dip the point into the Plasti Weld to pick some up. Then we touch the end of the tweezers to the plastic, which breaks the surface tension and the Plasti Weld will run into the seam. Repeat a few times while gently clamping together the halves. Then keep hold of it for a minute while it starts to harden, and jobs are good un. It'll take a good hour or so to fully harden up, of course, leaving it overnight wouldn't hurt, but you don't really need to. Next we have the lower legs, where we have two fronts and two rears. They're sided for a left leg and a right leg, but the parts are only going to fit correctly if you pair up the right bits. It's really obvious, when you get the right ones, the seam almost disappears. Just like with the body, we add a couple of drops of Plasti Weld while holding the parts together. For the arms, it's much the same. Each one has two parts, an inside and an outside. We put them together, add some Plasti Weld and let them harden. The last bit for the first pass of Plasti Weld is the head. Again, it's in two halves that get stuck together. This time though, we need to be super careful when holding the two halves together. The Plasti Weld is softening the plastic along the seam, so if you grip too tightly, you're going to end up with a ridge of plastic where it's getting squeezed. So you have to be extra gentle. Right, that's the sub-assemblies done. They're going to be left to harden for a good few hours, just so we know they're completely solid. Next, we're going to stick the lower legs to the knees. The fit is, of course, rather good, but this time there's a bit of scope for positioning. On most of the trucks, it's not too critical, as there's loads of space, but you can fine-tune the position if space is at a premium. To attach, we'll pop a spot of Plasti Weld on the knee and offer up the leg. We'll need to be fairly quick here, as we want to get both legs on so we can adjust them while the joints are still soft. Now it's on with the other leg, and we can add an extra spot of Plasti Weld on each of the joints just to help soften them up. Now we can very gently pop him down on his feet and urge the joints into position. For a typical setup, we want to set it up so the feet both sit evenly. We can recheck the joints to make sure they're still nice and even, and give the feet another quick alignment. Once they're spot on, we've got to leave him alone for a while so it all hardens up. Sometime later, and we can tidy up the seams. I found, rather than trying to sand them back, it's easier to use a knife to scrape away at the plastic. You can follow the contours, taking a little bit off with each pass. You don't need an especially sharp knife, you can even use the back of an X-Acto blade. The trick is, you're not trying to cut the plastic, just gently skim away at the top. After a few passes, you should find the seam completely disappears. Next, to get the head ready for paint, I'm going to drill a small hole in the base of the neck. The size isn't too critical, just as long as a cocktail stick is a snug fit. That's so when we paint it, we can stick the other end of the stick into some blue tack so we can spray it in primer. So that's all the easy bits done. Now for the tricky one, the arms. We need good access to the inside of the cab, so that means we want to remove the roof and the windscreen. Removing the side windows is quite handy too, but you can get away with leaving them in. We'll also remove the two front mounting screws. Just be careful to make sure the cab's sitting at the right height. You can look in through the front of the hole and make sure they're lined up. We need to be able to position the arms so the hands are fairly close to the steering wheel before we add the Plasti Weld. I tend to add a blob of blue tack front and back so the shoulders are in, but we can still adjust the position. Now, I won't show it, as all you're going to see is hands and wrists, but the goal is to set the hands up so they're close to, but not touching the wheel. We don't want them too tight, or they're going to get hung up when we fit or remove the cab. 
On some of the Tamiya trucks, it makes sense to carefully add some plasti weld with a driver in place. But with this Volvo, you can quite easily just remove the cab. We still need to be extremely careful though, we don't want to nudge the arms on the way up. Okay, now we can add a drop of plasti weld on each side and let it harden. You need to be really careful not to add too much here. If any gets on the paint, it's going to eat it and it's going to make a right mess. Sometime later, and we can peel off the blue tack. Remember the joints won't be all that strong yet, so we need to take care not to put too much pressure on them. There's one more little issue to sort out. With the arms in the right spot, there's some unsightly seams and gaps around the shoulders. What we do to fix it is use some of the parts tree the driver came from to fill the gap. Annoyingly, I didn't record the process, but it's just a case of cutting bits of plastic to cram into the gaps, add some plasti weld and just keep building up the plastic. Then, once it's all hardened up, we trim and shake the plastic usually start with a Dremel to take the big lumps down, then skim it with a blade to get the shape. What we're left with is a fairly tidy looking driver, if a little bit overexposed on the camera. Remember, it's a wrinkly old shirt, so if the shoulders aren't perfect, it really doesn't matter. The other advantage to filling the shoulder gaps is the arms are now really solid, so when we fit the cab, they're not going to get knocked off by the wheel. The last thing to do today is drill a hole in the bottom of the driver, quite literally. Just like the neck, we want to stick a cocktail stick up there so we can mount it on some blue tack and stick it to a board for paint. And so there's the driver put together and ready for paint. He's going to go off to the truck owner for that, so we'll see him again in a few videos when we stick him down to the seat. Next time we'll tidy up the wiring on the chassis, hopefully, running it through the body rather than along the chassis to make it completely hidden. Should be fun. For this week then, that's going to be it. So thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!